Similarly to profile drafting, cross-section drafting has also been updated to support tunnel designs. We'll start with selecting our cross-section sheet set. Again, right-click Edit. We have to choose a corridor again, and we want to use Tunnel. If you do select the wrong corridor, then you can always go into the properties of the sheet set, and you can change the assigned corridor here. Leave it as Tunnel. And close that. So we open up to a blank sheet here. We have essentially the same sheet settings that we have with the road corridor drafting workflow, cross-section layout and locations, uh, grid settings. The new component we have here obviously is the tunnels heading. So we can go ahead and click on that and expand it and we can see here we have the option to draw both our tunnels assigned to this corridor. So we can go ahead and do that and we'll draw them both. As if you recall we have the side-by-side -side tunnels so this allows us to see them both. If we go ahead and expand one of these tunnels we can see we have the option to draw any or all of the shapes within the tunnel. So here we can see we have our two shapes. We can turn one off or on if we don't want it. Further down we can see those individual shapes and we have some settings for them. Uh, we have the shapes themselves. We have settings for the color, line weight, line style, etc. And the same thing with these radius lines and the radius text. Uh, as you can see they're drawn in here. We can see that there we kind of have some overlap, so let's go ahead and turn off. We'll be turning off the radius lines and text for the outer shape. Now just leaves with the inner. And so we can actually go into this tunnel here, which is tutorial tunnel. We can expand the shapes, and we'll go to shape two and we'll turn off its radius lines and radius text. So now we can see we have the outer radius shown here and the inner radius shown here. It's a bit cleaner that way. We'll go back here and we'll expand our shapes. We have a few more nodes. Uh, we have the as-built node. We don't have any as-built data for this project so we won't be using this for now, but we can come back later once we have as-built data and add that to the cross-section drafting. Uh, we'll see that in a, another video. Uh, we do have these design labels here we can create. So we'll go ahead and create a design label and we'll create another one. So they're just set as placeholder text as one and two for now and we can go in and edit it. Again we can change the, the text style, the location, the rotation, all that. But here's where we want to edit the actual text. And aside from just adding plain text, we also have some smart tags we can add here. Um, so we can go ahead and add station. We can add that. Uh, we have some options for precision too, but we don't need to do that for now, so let's just hit OK. And now we can see we have the stationing for all these cross sections, uh, starting with 0, uh, and then 100, and so on. We go to our, our second label we created here is placeholder and we can go ahead and give a northing and easting label to these cross sections so we'll go northing of alignment point we'll add that and easting alignment point now right now both our labels are right on top of each other so let's add an offset let's go negative 0.2 and negative 1.2. So there we, we've played around a bit with the tunnels, we've added some labels. I'll just go back to this original cross section and we'll look at our cross section location. So right now where we're using a regular interval of 100 feet, uh, we can limit it to a specific range if we want. Uh, right now we're not. We also have these options here to include horizontal alignment points, vertical alignment points, and tunnel template points. So you can turn all those on. And we can see they'll be adding some additional templates, such as at station 125, we didn't have one before. We can also maybe go into our layout. We got a lot of empty space here. So maybe let's increase the number of columns to three. 
that's obviously well outside our sheet, but we can change our width to 10. And we get something like that. Um, again, once you're complete with your editing, you can just go ahead and close it, build your sheets, and you can look at each sheet individually. So that's just a small sample of what can be done with tunnel drafting. Obviously there's lots of options there that you can use to create your tunnel design deliverables.